I'm John Connor. You see me in such fine quality, epic chemistry educational videos such as chemical safety and terminators and no chemical safety, you're terminated. All right. For this, this is really a two-part video. The first part, we're going to be looking at your basic lab equipment that you would find in the lab. And what's the point to have them there and all that. So, with it here, we start out with a cartoon. They hate it when you carry the test tubes that way. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, let's start out with a dropper bottle. That's your basic dropper bottle. We use that to add drops of chemicals to different things. Fairly straightforward, very easy. And then we have the thing that's so stereotyped in a chemistry lab would be the test tube. They, uh, they do come in different sizes. Okay, you got your long, slimmer ones, and then you got your shorter, wider ones. Okay, it, again, it depends what you're using it for. Some of the test tubes they're used to really heat things up, uh, and others, it's just meant to hold stuff there. Then you have the spatula. Let me just double check that I'm doing fine. Then you have the spatula. It looks like a glorified shovel. It is a glorified shovel. You gotta sometimes have to spoon out some powders from the container into your test tube or beaker or whatever it is you need to do. Uh, that's also a basic tool that's used there. You'll have a chance to use that during the year. Glass stirring rods. Hey, guess what they're used for? Ha, ha. Yes, stirring. That's pretty much it. Uh, they do come in different lengths, and they, yes, they are made of glass, and the reason for that, as opposed to plastic or cardboard, is because glass doesn't absorb the stuff. It's not taking in the chemicals, so we can pretty much use it over and over and over again. The downside about the glass stirring rods is that they are likely to break. That's the thing, okay? So, yeah, not that exciting, but a very useful tool for us when we need to stir stuff. I know some people still use the one to use a spoon, but the number one rule in any chemistry lab is never, ever lick the spoon! Beaker, your basic container, okay? This one is a thousand milliliter beaker. You can see it right there. It's a, you got the maker and all that. And you may notice there's a plus or minus 5%. Um, if I had to go and measure 900 milliliters of something, I wouldn't use a beaker for it, but it is great to give us an estimate on how much roughly the liquid uh, that we have inside of there. They do come in different sizes. Some of them are really huge. This is one of the bigger ones. They do come in 2,000 milliliter, but they also come in 10 milliliter, and they're so cute. They're almost like little cute kittens. Seriously. This is also Beaker, but not the real Beaker. Dr. Bunsen Honeydew is trying to do something to the poor Beaker. And again, if you look at Beaker's head, it's the shape like the glass Beaker. And check out the hair. Woo, does Canoe have hair envy? No, not really. Wire gauze. We're going to be using the Bunsen burner. We're going to be heating things up. And sometimes we are going to need this here to help prevent too much flame from hitting the glass or maybe hitting the porcelain uh, crucible that we would be using. Okay? You basically have a wire screen there. Then you got this white powdery stuff there. It's not asbestos, but it is some kind of a fire uh, retardant. You cannot set this on fire. That's basically it. Erlenmeyer flask, another stereotype piece of glass where you'd find in the lab. And you may notice, hey, why is it shaped like this? Well, it makes it easy to grab it by the neck and swirl it around. Okay, that's basically it. It's used for mixing uh, things and it's pretty convenient and pretty handy. You guys will have a chance to work with this. Test tube rack. Yes, it holds test tubes. This is the ones, this is some of them that we use in the lab. These are made out of wood. Uh, there are those that are made out of metal. Some of them are made out of plastic. 
Uh, they do come in different sizes. It's based on the size of the test tube. It's depending on what's needed in the lab. Sometimes you don't need that many test tubes. Other times you got to use a lot of test tubes. We're not going to use the a lot of test tubes. We're not. We're okay for that. Test tube clamp. Guess what? That holds test tubes. Okay? It's a piece of brass. You squeeze it, put the test tube in, and all you have to do is let it go and it will clamp onto the test tube. Okay? That's basically it. All right. Uh, you do not use this to clamp it onto your ear because it's just going to make you look stupid in front of your friends and you'd have to find a rock, crawl under it, and stay there until you're about 18 or when you graduate high school. It, it, do, it doesn't matter. Okay? But that's what it's useful for because, you know, the thing is, serious safety uh, questionnaire, how do you tell if a glass is hot? And I'm not talking it's a fine looking piece of glass. I'm talking about temperature hot. How do we know? You don't. That's it. So you don't want to touch glass that has been sitting on the burner, sitting on a, on a plate, on a hot plate. You don't want to do that because if you touch it, you can burn yourself. And you want to be careful about that. Future's so bright, I gotta wear my shades. All right, any questions? Aha, I gotcha, you can't ask me any questions, can you? <laughs> oh man, I'm killing myself. But that is the correct way to put the test tube in the test tube clamp, okay? Very, very important. Now if you sit there and try to squeeze the two parts here as you're moving along, guess what? That is going to make the test tube clamp release the test tube. The test tube hits the floor. Oh, you got broken glass. Now what? Well, that's going to be in part two. So again, once it's clamped like this, all you got to do is just pick it up. You don't need to squeeze it. That's the key thing. Okay? A funnel. Some people might mistake in this as a trumpet, a glass trumpet. Sometimes they're in plastic, sometimes they're in metal, okay? Uh, we use that, it helps it make the job easier to pour liquids into something, okay? Sometimes we put in filter paper because maybe we're trying to separate the liquid from some of the solid in a chemical solution. Sometimes we need to do that. Scoopula! Not to be confused with Count Chocula, who was a character on some kid's cereal back when I was growing up. I, I don't know if they have it anymore, but it's funny. It is literally the name Scoopula. It is a piece of metal. You might think, hey, this looks like a tent peg that you pound into the ground when you set the tent up in the campground in the summertime. You're right, except that's not what it's used for. It's scooping. Okay, you're scooping out powder or whatever it is that you need to have done. Okay, great stuff. Scoopula. Tweezers, also known as forceps, at least in the science world. Do we really use that? Are we going to be really using that here this year? I don't think so. I mean, that was such more of a bio, baby bio thing, you know, we had to go lift up the skin of the frog and all that other stuff. Okay, we're not going to be really using it here. Holy jeepers, Batman, it's a utility clamp! You might think this might belong on Batman's utility bill because it's called a utility clamp. No, that's not belonging on Batman's belt. We attach this to something called a ring stand. With this, we can attach all kinds of things. But if you look at the curves here, and you notice that this little wing nut here, you can twist it close, and this will clamp onto something. Now, if you look at the round shape there for a moment, it might give you a clue as to what is a clamp. Hmm, I have to check my time. Okay, I'm doing great. What does that look like? Tight 
test tube. This is useful for a test tube. Okay? A ring stand. I could not put it on the counter of the lab room and take a photograph, so I had to put it on the floor and lie it down. This is a foundation of so many of the experiments. You have a very heavy metal plate uh, underneath here. If you got hit with it, it's going to hurt a lot. You got a metal rod that's sticking uh, out, and we can attach different utility clamps there. Uh, yeah, you can see that there's one in the classroom. Okay, it's got the roll of paper towels on it because it's a great paper towel dispenser. But in the lab, we use that as a foundational piece of equipment. Graduated cylinders. Fantastic. Yep, they are used for measuring liquid. Now, we call them graduated not because they've gone to school, they got their diploma, and they're heading on to bigger and better adventures like some of you guys in the next few years of your lives. No, it's graduated because you've got these markings, the lines that have funny little numbers on them with the letters M and L. These are measuring amounts of milliliters, okay? And we will talk about how to use this equipment. It's going to be a real key thing when you're doing the lab experiments. Because in the experiment, let's say you got to measure out 30 milliliters of copper sulfate solution. Well, you're not going to use your beaker to measure out 30 milliliters of copper sulfate solution. You're going to use this. You're going to use the graduated cylinder. Why? Because it's the correct tool that you would use to measure out your 30 milliliters of copper sulfate solution. Okay? Now, they do come in glass. They do come in plastic. Okay, there are advantages and disadvantages to each of them. The real cool part is, the, with plastic, you can't break it. Glass, you can break it, but it is easier to see the measurements in the glass compared to the plastic. That's just the way that it is. They do range in size. Some of them are very tiny, maybe like five milliliters. And they always got the mucho macho grande cylinder, about 2,000 milliliters, or what you would find in a typical soda bottle. And I, in fact, do have some of them uh, stored in the lab room. I've not really used them a whole lot. Iron ring. It's a distant relative of Iron Man. Correct a joke. Okay, the iron ring is something that we can attach to the ring stand and it forms a little platform that we can go and put the wire gauze on there, we can put a beaker, and we can do a setup for chemistry experiment. Okay, it's very useful. I do not use it to look through and see all the little boys and girls out there in nursery school land on a long ago TV show called Romper Room. That lady never mentioned my name. She never said she saw Mark. All right. Lab burner, also known as a Bunsen burner. There are different kinds of lab burners out there. Bunsen burner, well, Robert Bunsen invented a particular style of lab burner. In fact, this is it right here. Okay. There are others out there. Basically, we have to connect it to a gas source. You've got a tube that sticks out spreads the flames out, and then down here there's like a little collar that you can turn and you can control how much air gets into the gas, mixing with the gas to burn the flame. Now for us here at Western Christian High School in our labs, we need to leave this closed. Otherwise, the flame that we're going to get is <laughs> In order to get a flame that keeps going, you shut it nice and closed. Okay, so that's how it goes. Now, this is a regular size one. Now, I do have a couple that are the Mucho Macho Grande, the Moab, Moab, M-O-A-B, that stands for Mother of All Burners. And they're very hot. Oh, my, they're hot. Let me tell you. Ah. Droppers. Now, we also call them dropper pipettes. This is kind of an obvious one. Now, there are some people who think, hey, I need to add water to my little experiment, and they'll use that. Great. Even in uh, Baby Bio, they use the droppers for some kind of experimentation. But there's always a couple of guys who sit there and think, hey, 
How far will that water go out when I squirt that thing? Ah, oh, for crying out loud, don't do it. That, that's, it's a poor choice, really. Grumpy Cat will not be happy with you. Evaporating dish. Guess what? We evaporate crystals with it. The dish is made of porcelain, okay? And one of the experiments you guys will get to do this year is you are going to heat up some crystals that are connected with water. They're hooked up with water, and the water's gonna go boom, it's gonna evaporate, it's gonna go bye-bye. Again, my future's very bright, and we get to use that. Now, here's the thing. It's made of porcelain, so it is fragile. Okay. Crucible and cover. Guess what? You get to heat up things in there too. And again, it's made up of same porcelain. Okay. Now they do make some in China. Now they've also made them here in the United States by a company called Coors. C-O-O-R-S, which some people think, wait a minute, don't these guys make the beer? Yes, yes they do. But they also make these as well. Now this one happens to have a top. Okay, because it's intended that whatever you put in the heat up, you're going to close the lid and that's it. Now, for crying out loud, when this thing is heated up, do not touch it with your bare fingers. That would not be a good choice. In fact, that would be a stupid choice. Okay, you don't want to do that. That's where we're going to be using the crucible tongs, which that'll be in there later on in this uh, episode. So, graduated measuring pipette, checking out my time. Graduated measuring pipette, this is something, if you want to measure a specific amount of water, okay, here's the tube that you can stick in the water, and you've got some graduation, graduated marks on here. You're gonna put a bulb here on the end, and then with the uh, bulb, and I would teach you how to use it, you're gonna end up sucking up some water or whatever liquid, and then you're gonna transfer it doing what genuine chemists do. Thermometer, that's a tough one. Measuring temperature. Now this is one of the itty bitty ones. Now we do have the longer ones as well. We don't use the mercury based thermometers uh, here. Crucible tongs, yes. All those things, they can be this tiny, which is what you guys are gonna use, but I also have the major mondo one, which I refer to as ye nostril splitter. I'll let you figure that one out on your own. But again, this is what you use to grab really hot items because you don't want to burn your fingers. Okay? A spark lighter. A way to light up that lab burner because it creates a spark. Okay? Safety goggles to protect your eyes. Okay? That'd be kind of important for this particular uh, thing. And notice here, dryeyepaint.com provided this uh, picture. We want to take a moment and just say thank you to dryeyepaint.com. Okay. We're at the end here. You're going to have to stay tuned for part two. This is John Connor signing off. Peace.